Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time visiting me. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you some hot takes on upcoming tarot and oracle deck releases. So strap yourself in. If you are new to hot takes, the way I approach hot takes is basically like a first impressions. I try not to do any advanced research on any of the decks I'm about to talk about. And a lot of these get added to my list because you all requested these decks uh, to be the ones that I talk about. So without further ado, Let's get into it. We're gonna be starting off with independent decks that are up for pre-order right now. There are three that you guys brought to my attention. The first of these is A Ritual Tarot by Tierra May. Tierra May. I've seen a lot of buzz about this deck in the community. Now this one has already been released previously, but this is a pre-order for the new printing, I believe. It says second edition, so I don't know if there are significant changes to this. This is a very interesting deck, but holy cow, is it expensive? I did not realize. I pulled this up and was like immediate sticker shock. So I get that this is Canadian dollars. So you have to assume if you're not from Canada that, that the US price is usually about 30-ish percent cheaper. Um, so check, obviously check the price on Etsy where you're at. I'll have a link to this and every other deck I'm talking about down below so you can check it out for yourself. But for me, the price is $133 plus shipping, and the shipping is $36.40. That means that for me to buy this deck, I have to spend almost $175, well, probably closer to $180 Canadian dollars with taxes. Why is it so expensive? Now, to be fair, um, as much as I'm sitting over here experiencing sticker shock, I am definitely well aware that independent deck creators, if they can only afford to purchase in small print runs, are going to pay a much higher cost per unit than say uh, even a larger or more popular independent publisher or a mass market publisher. So their buying power is a lot less, which is often why you see so much higher of a price for independent decks but that's still very, very high. So I'm curious if this comes with um, a book or goodies or gold. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it's very expensive. Um, so this is a collage deck. Again, it's, I don't know if I said this already, in my head I've said it, but it's very intriguing to me. It's, it's kind of chunky collage style and these decks, I feel like they've been gaining a lot of traction, this particular style of tarot deck lately where we're really, um, attracted, I think, to some of this sort of clunky, not clunky, chunky is the word I want to use. I don't even know if that's right. Choppy, uh, paper collage, other types of collage. I feel like there's been a bit of a resurgence in popularity of this style of deck. And I am definitely not immune to that trend. I feel like I'm more drawn to it. This definitely feels like the kind of tarot deck that would be cool to own. I'm not entirely sure. Like I have a deck like this. I have the, um, Voyager Tarot, which to me has this side, sort of vibe to it, um, but I'm more familiar with it and I've had it for longer. So of course that's going to, oops, I went away from the pictures. So that's going to influence me for sure. This is not the guidebook. So I wanna see, is there pictures of the, please tell me there's a guidebook. Is there a guidebook? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Phew. So the guidebook book looks like it's got full uh, color imagery and the book looks like it's larger. So that to me, de that definitely adds to a printing cost significantly and makes the cost make a little more sense or feel a little more justified to me. I really kind of love this like peach under the pelvis. This feels very like sensual to me. Is there even a title on this card? Are all the, do the cards have titles? Yeah, they do. They do, right? Wait, maybe they don't. I don't see the cards being titled or numbered in these preview images. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the High Priestess, maybe? Where are the titles? May, uh, if you own this deck, because this is a new edition, let us know down below if there's titles on the cards, because it looks like there's not. And at that point, I feel like this is already going to be a deck that it's gonna take you a minute, I think, to wrap your head around. And if you're new to tarot, not having the titles on there, mm, that could be a bit of a barrier. On the other hand, it can really sink you into the artwork, but if you don't know what you're looking at or you don't know what card that's supposed to be, I feel like that could be a bit of a challenge. In fact, let's go to where it has temperance. Yeah, like that's definitely, temperance and it's labeled in the guidebook but not on the card. I feel like that would make this deck functionally very difficult to use unless you were using it 
strictly intuitively or mostly intuitively without needing to lean or wanting to lean into core tarot meanings as easily. I don't know. I would love to hear feedback from anybody who, who owns it down below. This one tempts me because it's so unique. I can't say I'm ruling it out yet, but that price is astronomical and will probably keep me from pulling the trigger for quite some time if I ever do. But it is interesting. It is interesting. Oh, and I didn't say, so this is, uh, it says due to arrive within six to eight weeks, but we don't know six to eight weeks from when. I almost wonder if that means that um, this is a print on demand kind of situation because normally you would see a date like February or March or something like that, like around this time these will ship. So it could be that these get um, ordered in on demand and then shipped to the customer. So then is this really a pre-order? I don't know. I, I find it a little bit confusing. So, but that would definitely justify the cost because if you're, if the creator is ordering these one at a time and sending them out to people, it's definitely going to be much more expensive. It's almost the price of retail at that point for a publisher. And um, then they're having to mark it up and then sell it. So maybe that's what it is. Is this always the way this is? Maybe this is, maybe this isn't even really a, a true pre-order. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you know. Give us the scoop in the comments. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, so let's talk about this one. So I spotted this and I had a whole moment. This is called the Wild Child Tarot and there's also a Wild Child Oracle. Now I found this on the Etsy shop Lazy May and Cozy Day. Um, I don't know what the story is with this particular Etsy shop. They seem to have decent reviews. They have a bunch of decks that are created in Thailand. I don't know anything about this particular Etsy shop, so I don't want to specifically sanction it, so I don't because I don't know. This is the only place I could find it on Etsy though, so I'm assuming this is legit. Also that price though. Hello, $110 Canadian. What is happening in the world right now? Uh plus 23.80 Canadian to ship. This dispatches directly from Thailand. Um but I had a moment when I first spotted this because this looks exactly like the art on the Healing Waves tarot. I mean, right down to the font and the way the borders are done and this art style, this looks ex like exactly the same to me, the same art style. Um, so I have no way to know this for sure because I can't see anything that references it. And it says here by uh, Scarab, Scarab, Scribblist, Scribblist. Um, somebody who has the Healing Waves tell me, does this not look exactly like the Healing Waves tarot? Um, not the not the cards, but like the art style, the borders, the font, all of it looks exactly like Healing Waves to me. So I suspect this might be the same artist, but again, I can't say that for sure. Um, it is intriguing to me for that reason because I do really like this art style. I find it really soft and pretty. Um, this feels like though a, um, a very animal-based deck, kind of. There's no way, this has to be the same artist, right? Somebody, somebody validate me here. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be. But um, there was an artist name listed for the Healing Waves Tarot. Let me grab my copy. At one point I knew the artist name. Yeah, Nawan Jun Hasiri. So my Healing Waves Tarot, um, Nawan Jun, Has Jun Hasiri. But like, just like, like, look at this though. There, this has to be, this has to be the same. Like, check out this art style. And then like this, it, it has to be. I'm pretty sure it's even the same font on the cards. Like I cannot, I can't be convinced otherwise. Um, so this is exciting, particularly for those of you who really like the Healing Waves Tarot or like this art style to have an opportunity to get a different deck, perhaps by, if not the same artist, an artist with a very similar style. Um, obviously this is not strictly like an ocean-y um, tarot, but it's really pretty. I love this um, strength card a lot with the girl hugging the tiger. I think that's so sweet. So sweet. <laughs> I think that's super, super sweet. Uh, could do without the super scary spider devil card. Uh, but yeah, so I'm not tempted to buy this, but it is really interesting. And I think there's also a wild child oracle that's like oval shaped that's already out. Anyway, this one is a pre-order. This one's ready for shipping in early February. Yeah, sister deck to the wild child oracle. This has to be the same artist. Like it has to be. Anyways, we're gonna move on now. So this is exciting and I can't decide what I wanna do about it, if anything. But the Saki Saki Tarot, I believe this is the same deck, but it has been renamed I Am The Artist Tarot um, by Saki Saki. And this deck has been out of print for a long time. I think I first heard about this deck over at Kittens Weights and Tarot's channel. 
It's got a real quirk to it, but I thought I remembered that the original Saki Saki Tarot had a lot of headless people. And these pictures, everybody seems to have their heads. So now I'm not entirely sure. I wanna see more pictures, please. Are there any more pictures? Yeah, everybody seems to have their heads. So now I'm not sure, is this the same? Anybody who has the Saki Saki Tarot, y'all, I'm leaning on your expertise hard here. If you have the Saki Saki Tarot, is this I Am The Artist Tarot the same deck? just renamed or is it changed? Because I like that everybody has heads and it's super quirky and fun, but I kind of want this. And I don't know if I'm just being sucked in because of all the colors, cause y'all know, y'all know how I am with color. Um, there's something so fun and vibrant and quirky about it, but in a way that I really like. A lot of the quirky decks I feel like end up being like black and white. Why, why though? Uh, and this one is, it's not really all that more reasonably priced. I don't think it's 80. Okay, it's 84.90 US, which means for me, it's probably still like 120 bucks. Um, yeah, plus shipping, but it's on pre-order status. Uh, it says the availability is going to be February 15th, 2023 is the estimate. So if you've been fiending for the Saki Saki Tarot, this is your chance to get at least one that's similar or by the same artist. So check this out. Um, I will have this linked down below. I found it very difficult to find the link to purchase by just going to the Saki Saki website. So um, it's not an affiliate link or anything. This is just a regular deck link. So just it, click the link to find it. Cause I'm not, I'm honestly not sure how, how you find it otherwise. Cause if I just go, in fact, I can probably show you. If I just go, no, I can't even find the shop link up here. I just found it really difficult to find. So yeah, but I'm excited about this. I wanna see more about it and I would love to know. Um, Okay, so yeah, it says, now out of print, the Saki Saki Tarot for the artist in each of us has been reincarnated to I Am The Artist Tarot by Saki Saki. So it says, unique additional cards to this deck is the artist and the unnamed. So that implies that the rest of the cards are the same, I think. Uh, a black core 320 GSM uh, paper uh, cardstock is a really nice cardstock. It'll shuffle beautifully. It'll have some bend to it. It'll be really nice. Um, kind of excited about that, to be honest. And then there's a book. Yeah, so you can also order in bulk or order two or whatever. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this. I don't know if I'm gonna buy it yet. We're, we'll see. I really wanna know if there's a lot of headless people in it. I don't know if that will tip me one way or another, but it, it might. Anyways, moving on, we're gonna talk about mass market decks next. So this one's a bit of a cheat because it's already out, but I have had this on my list for forever and then it went and released early. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about it anyways. The Tarot of the Owls is illustrated by Elizabeth Alba, who is the illustrator of the Everyday Witch Tarot, a longtime favorite of mine. I love Elizabeth Alba's art style. And this is a deck created by Pamela Chen. So Pamela Chen will have written the guidebook and likely directed the art, at least that's my understanding. So here we have um, the Two of Cups. This is so beautiful. I mean, have have we not been just waiting for an owl tarot? Yeah, I think we have. Uh, I think we have. Look at this lovers. This is so beautiful. I feel like if you just, if you really want a tarot with owls in it, that like this is, this is your deck, right? Like this is definitely going to be your deck. Um, the Empress. Oh, she's so pretty. And it looks like it's not all the same kind of owl. I mean, I'm not an owl expert, but these look like different types of owls to me. Digging the Knight of Wands. That's freaking awesome. I love that. Are these the backs? Good job on the backs, you guys. Oh my gosh, those are beautiful. That's a that's a really neat back. It's not reversible, um, which is never a deal breaker for me. I, I don't know if I'm gonna purchase this one or not, but it is dang pretty. It is dang pretty. Um, and it's Llewellyn, so you know it's gonna come with that big glossy card, uh, big glossy guidebook. Um, the cardstock will be standard Llewellyn's cardstock lately, which has been, I would assume it's gonna be the same, which is kind of glossy, um, borderless. <sighs> this looks really pretty. Look at this. I wanna see the box. Oh, there we go. There's the box. Yeah. This looks really good. If you've been excited for it, if you've been waiting for it, it's out now, go get it. But I think it did come in ahead of schedule. I think they were originally projecting it for like March, maybe even later, um, but it's out now. So go, go, go get it and then tell me about it and I'll think about it some more. Next up is the Ann Stokes Gothic Oracle. Now, uh, Ann Stokes, this is published by US Games, and this is actually, the guidebook for this is written by Stephen Bright, um, who I'm assuming made all the associations with the artwork, and Ann Stokes is, of course, the illustrator. Um, I believe this is using pre-existing artwork by Ann Stokes, and then Stephen has put it together into a into an, into an Oracle deck. I'm really freaking excited about this. I have not bought it yet. I'm still trying to decide, 
but this is very, 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 very tempting. So Anne Stokes is an, uh, a well-known fantasy artist. And what, what catches my attention about this is that right away I see both dragons and unicorns in the same deck. And Anne Stokes has done um, some really comprehensive bits of artwork featuring both a lot of unicorns and a lot of dragons. And Peggy and I are unicorn and dragon and it just excites me. So um, this artwork, for example, I actually have in my little uh, Ann Stokes unicorn uh, bicycle playing cards deck that I use to work with one of my spirit guides. And so this blue moon card, I don't even know if I care what the titles are. I'm probably going to be a little biased here, <laughs> but I love her artwork. This is like classic to me anyways, classic like 90s, early 2000s fantasy art, like exactly the kind of stuff I love. Like look at this, look at this with the fierce loyalty. Mm, I love it. Oh, and there's a mermaid, excuse me. And she's holding a skull. This is very badass. I love this. Is that, that literally looks like Maleficent. That's Maleficent, right? of some sort, it looks like Maleficent. It's gotta be meant to be Maleficent, right? Right? Anyways, Moon Witch, it says. Um, this just feels like fierce and vibrant. This would pair really well, I think, with the Tarot of Vampires or with um, the Bohemian Gothic Oracle, perhaps, maybe, or Bohemian Gothic Tarot, excuse me, which I am on the fence about. It's been in my purgatory drawer for a while, but I haven't been able to get rid of it yet, so it might be coming back, we'll see. Uh, but anyways, Look at these backs. Are you kidding me? It says we, no, Ann Stokes Collection. Oh, it's like a coin that says Ann Stokes Collection. These are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. And Guidebook by Stephen Bright. Yes, please. If you haven't read Stephen Bright's writing, it's it's really, he's his writing style is very approachable. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, this is definitely going to be on my list. This is due out January 20th. So just in a couple of days, I think, from when you're seeing this video. So I'm, mm, that rainbow dragon on the front is really, it's really doing something to me. <laughs> All right, next, we have the Secrets of Paradise Tarot. This is an 81 card deck and guidebook inspired by Caribbean and Latin American culture and mysticism. First of all, love that this is the theme. I think this has been a really underrepresented area of tarot. So this is exciting. I also love the colors. Secrets of Paradise, look at this. Leticia Ferrer Rivera is the creator. There's the sun card. Oh wait, here we go. That's better, now we can actually see it. Oh wait, let's go back to regular, not zoomed in, and let me zoom in the screen. There we go, now we can see it. So here's the sun. Here we have the three of pentacles. Oh, love that vibe. Three of wands, king of wands, king of cups. That's pretty freaking awesome. He's got two tails, that's wicked and Princess of Swords. So this is really, really beautiful. Keep your eyes on this one. When is this one due out? Uh, Tuesday, January 24th. Um, and this should be showing you US prices because I opened it up on the US Amazon. So yeah, one of the first tarot decks to incorporate Caribbean and Latin American symbolism and culture, both past, present, featuring vibrant, colorful artwork. Do we see any more images? Ooh, what's that? Is that like the 10 of cups with the rainbow and the, or maybe that's the lovers. That might be the lovers. That's the only thing is I can't actually tell. Have we seen, have we seen any? Oh yeah, no, no, it's it's not Pivish. I was just like, wait, we saw the three of wands, the three, yeah, we're good. Uh, three of pentacles, yeah. We're seeing a lot of the same um, art down here. So that looks really good. Oh, this is published by Hay House. Dang it, I don't like their cardstock at all. If it ever changes, y'all have to let me know because I've been kind of avoiding Hay House decks for a bit now. All right, let's talk about some Kickstarter decks. Animal Spirits of the Sacred Isles Oracle deck. This looks so beautiful and I am such a freaking sucker for animal decks. And what happens is I acquire a lot of animal decks and then I end up rehoming a bunch of animal decks because I end up with too many. And it's a problem, like it's a real problem I have. Anyway, this is funding until Tuesday, January 31st at 1 a.m. So if you wanna get in as a backer on Kickstarter, that's when you'll wanna do it. And the project has already met its funding goal, so it will be happening. Um, let's take a peek at the project. Uh, oh, this is the creator of the Wisdom of the Depths, which was a watery uh, tarot deck, I believe. Yeah, that was a watery tarot deck. This has this has got that really earth toned, like grounded feel to it. Right away, I can tell you though that the uh, cards have the name of the animal or creature on it, and not any keywords, which typically ends up being a deal breaker for me. And I know I sound like a broken record. It's just, there's something about, I think it's because I struggle already with animal decks. I love them, but I struggle to connect with them. And if it's just going to be a labeled animal, it's not gonna end up ultimately working for me. But I love that this is based in the animals of specifically, is it the UK and the British Isles? Is that what it said? 
the Sacred Isles, yeah, the British Isles. So for anybody overseas who has been looking for an animal deck that's going to have animals that are familiar, like I love, love having my Pacific Northwest tarot because it's animals that I've seen growing up my whole life because that's the area of the world I've lived in my whole life. And so this, I imagine, is going to really, really hit the spot for a lot of people. Now this one is an oracle, not a tarot. So yeah, it's not giving us a whole lot other than the animal name to work with on the card. I love that there's a ladybird and that it's called a ladybird, not a ladybug. Um, again, kind of based in the land that it's from. So there's some things, there's some animals and creatures here that I would not have ever seen in, in real life or encountered. So I think that's awesome. What is this? Oh, and then there's 10 copies. Well, they might be gone already, but there was, was some copies left of the Wisdom of the Depths tarot deck also that you could, I guess, um, bundle in with your backing. Um, I'm just curious if it says anything else. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. I have something to say about this. <laughs> so it says that I've chosen to have the Oracle, Oracle cards printed on 350 GSM Xanta Games board. This sturdy board makes them ideal for long-term use. Um, now, there's a couple things about this that I want to say. The first is, and it says it right here, the cards and box are paper stock and can be re recycled and the cards are not laminated. Now, I do have one other deck made of Xanta board and it is the Textured Tarot. And that is an absolutely unshuffleable deck. At least you cannot riffle it and the cards have zero flexibility. They are brittle, which means that if you bend them too much, they will like snap and crease, um, which has been a huge issue for me with that deck. Now, I still have and still love my shuff my um, texture tarot. It shuffles hand over hand, but that creator said it was made of Xanta board. Unless I mixed up, I'm pretty sure that's the name. Um, so that would be my one downside to this deck really is that, that, that if you like to riffle, this is not gonna be it. But I believe that that is one of the most recyclable types of cardstock. So it's a give take thing. If you want a sustainable deck, that one is, is sustainable as I understand it. There's no plastics or anything like that in it. So it will break down um, if you were to I guess you could recycle it, compost it. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I know that it breaks down. I know it breaks down. So that is a benefit, but you do 350 GSM Xanta board is going to feel thick. It's going to feel stiff, at least in my experience. It could be that it's come some way. I mean, come along a ways since my uh, texture tarot was produced, but that's my understanding. So that is something you should probably be aware of. That could be, I think, something that throws people off because there's actually, there's like I said, there's only the one other deck I've been aware of that's actually made from that cardstock. So it could catch people unawares, but it is, this looks really, really, really beautiful and it's already funded. So it's definitely happening, which is amazing. I will point out too, that if the cards are bigger, they may feel more bendy than a tarot sized deck, which is going to be more compact and feel more stiff. Next up, this is tarotultraviolet.te. <laughs> Uh, it says Unju queer at uh, eco feminist. I'm assuming this is like a queer eco feminist tarot. I, w I would guess, but because I think that's French. Um, so I feel like somebody told me about this, and I thought it was really interesting. It's already funded. It had a low goal of only 3,500 Canadian, so it's funded at 5,000 Canadian plus, and you have until January 31st at 8:59 p.m. to back this one. So, okay, that's right. Somebody put this on my, when I, when I do a request out for what decks you guys want to hear about, somebody called this out and said it reminded them of the Many Queens Tarot, I think, but colorful, which immediately catches my attention because Many Queens is one of those decks that really interests me, but because it is black and white, <laughs> I know I would never use it. Uh, right away, I am really, really digging the look of these aces. Look at this. Are these all aces? These have to be the aces. They look really vibrant and cool. And that eight of cups looks incredible too. I want a bigger picture. <laughs> I want a bigger picture. So um, this is all written in French. Yeah, I really, really dig the look of this. Um, right away, I'm noticing there is a real diversity of the characters in the deck. I really like, I really like all the colors. I really like all the colors. Um, this also looks like it's going to be more squarish than standard tarot dimensions, if that makes any sense. I'm also loving that I'm already seeing, like, it looks like she's maybe walking with a cane here, the queen, I'm assuming, it says mystique of batons. So that I'm digging a lot. Okay, so here we go. So palerins, I don't know what that means in French, but those obviously are the pages. I love that we see some hairy legs. This is, I love this, yo, I love this. Um, then we have prophetesses. 
So I'm assuming those are in the rank of knight. Mystiques look like they are in the rank of queen. Oh my God, and we have somebody here with an artificial leg. We have somebody walking with a cane. I wasn't wrong about that. And then check this out. The guides are like the, the top tier, I'm assuming, of the suit. We have somebody on roller skates, on a skateboard. We have somebody with a bicycle here. And these might be knights, actually. The guides almost look, they're mobile, right? In a way you would expect knights to be. I'm so curious now. I wonder if this is almost like prince, princess, queen, knight, like almost like Thoth ranking style, because that just looks like knights for the top here. Um, anyways, and here we have somebody with a walker. So I love that we're seeing assisting devices. We're de seeing different levels of ability. I love seeing the variety of people. That's very exciting to me. These backs are also really pretty because they're purple. Um, I love this so much. I'm really loving this. Oh, see, look, it looks like it's like, does it say what the size is? Oh, three and a half by five. I'm assuming that's three and a half by five inches. If it is, that's more like Oracle size, which is interesting. It's bigger than I was imagining, um, but definitely slightly more squarish than tarot, which is more like rectangular-ish, what am I saying? Anyways, um, seven, eight cards plus two exclusive cards, I'm assuming explicative. Again, I'm extrapolating because I don't speak French, um, but I can pick up on a few words here or there. So here are the minors. So here's an example of the cup. So we have the ace, the two, the three, four, five, I really like this, six, seven, eight. I love this nine and the 10 with the T set. I love that. Oh, I wanna see more, I wanna see more. Okay, this one may have, this one may have to happen. Uh, let me just click the remind me button. Um, I could see myself getting this. Wait, how much is it? How much is it? Uh, okay, one tarot. I don't know what any of the other stuff says here, but this looks like the cheapest here. One tarot, seven, eight cards, two exclusive cards. I don't know what these other things are. Do I care? No. With shipping, it's $60 Canadian. Okay, this is happening. BRB, I'm just gonna back this real quick. Okay, so I've backed it and I figured out how to translate the page to English. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, let me just come back here and take a look. Um, so it says, using the metaphor of the spectrum of light, ultraviolet tries to represent a variety of spiritual experiences and to make us feel what exists beyond our future queer and eco-feminist revolutionaries, as well as the presence of our ancestors in our bodies. This for me, one of the, is one of the magics of cards that of putting into image sometimes vague sensations or even of making tangible what was hidden in a dark corner of our consciousness. I love this so much. Um, now that I've backed it, let's just double check what it says here. Um, yeah, here we go. The names of the figure cards have been completely revamped to break away from the classic royal imagery and make room for more fluid gender identification. Fat and thin bodies, black, white, and colored skins, fragmented bodies with realistic features, disabled bodies, in movement and at rest. I aimed for a spectrum, I hope, broad enough of body experiences to go hand in hand with the queer and eco-feminist values of this deck. I think in French they call it game, but um, yeah. So yeah, three and a half by five inches. I don't think it says what the card stock is. It just says in color with matte lamination, um, an organic cotton bag, uh, plus some additional surprises. So yeah. So the level that I backed, let's see, for the sake of transparency, my budget, my creative process, uh, I'm not sure what all that is, is about, but let's just go back over here and see what I backed it at. Um, so I did the one, which is this one. Okay, so that comes with 78 cards, a mirror sticker, a silk ribbon, a fabric pocket, I'm guessing fabric bag. Okay, so that's what I backed, I backed it. That's, that's my hot take. It's not very hot, I guess, I backed it. Okay, let's talk about the Mermaid's Purse Oracle deck. This looks like a really like dark mermaid deck. Dark kind of like gothy mermaids. That's what I'm getting from this. More people. Okay, so this one has not quite met its goal. It's got 16 days to go. You have until Tuesday, January 31st at 12.25 a.m. Pacific time to back it. So that's midnight Pacific time. Um, hi guys, welcome to my second Oracle deck. Oh, okay, Olivia Rose is the creator. Two-piece box that will come in. This this is totally giving me dark, dark mermaid vibes, like dark ocean, dark, deep ocean. This makes me think of like deep, deep ocean, you know, where you have those um, angler fish that, and like other things that light up. That's what it makes me think of. Um, it's all about finding direction in your life and includes a little bit of, a little bit of soul searching. There'll be 40 cards. Um, yes, finding a starting point in difficult situations and helping us move when we feel stagnant is what this deck was made for. This is really beautiful. I'm a little tempted by this. Um, not gonna lie. I think I'm gonna sit with this one a little bit longer, but I am gonna hit remind me. This is really beautiful. 
the keywords are really good. Illuminate, self-expression, protected, pause, bloom, restricted. That restricted one is really potent. Looks like they're in a net. Dream, closed, open, past. These are good keywords. Change, really like that. So these are also about three by five. Well, three by 4.875, so a little smaller than three by five. Um, and there's some add-ons you can get. Looks like a little guidebook. Love the backs. These are supposed to ship around the fall. So it's not an unrealistic timeline. Looks to me like the art is done. Um, at least nearly done. There seems like a lot of images here. How much is this one? Let's just see. Uh, for just the Oracle deck, it would cost Canadian about $89 Canadian. So that's pretty reasonable. US, you're gonna be looking at less than that, obviously. Um, maybe not too much less because international shipping would still be, still be a thing because this looks like it's an overseas creator. So yeah, that's really cool. I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on that one for sure. The Fat Folks Tarot, this is so exciting. I'm so glad that this campaign is doing so, so well. I was actually gifted a copy of this deck and I was really wowed by it for a deck that is made by so many different artists. I felt like it was pretty cohesive and it has beautiful artwork. It did end up still hitting that place for me where it's just a little too disjointed because it's a collaboration deck. That is not a deck problem, that is a me problem. I have a hard time with, with collaborative decks. They just end up feeling disjointed for me. And But I will say, I almost, almost was able to get over that for this because it's really, really well done. It's also very exciting to me to have a deck that's entirely made up of fat people. I think it's really, really wonderfully done. Um, I think that the way that the diversity of bodies is shown is pretty skillful. I wish there was more pictures of the art though. Where's the, Where are the pictures of the cards in the campaign? Oh no. Um, it's fully funded and then some. I mean, it's, it's being very successful. But yeah, I wish there was, you, you will be able to find some flip throughs and it looks like there are some videos on the campaign page you can check out. I thought it was a really gorgeous deck uh, and I just wanted to share it with you guys because it looks like I think this is going to be the final. Yeah, this is the last time the Fat Folks Tarot deck will be printed. Um, so they're doing some improvements to the cards. It looks like it's gonna be on Black Core 330 GSM cardstock, which is incredible. Two piece box, brand new guidebook. It looks like it's gonna be done very, very well. This edition or this printing is gonna be is gonna be a good one. So check it out for sure if this interests you because this will be, it sounds like your last chance. The Peony Clown Tarot, I don't even know. You guys, okay, so the issue I have is that there's just, I know about this deck already because this is by Sam West whose art has just really grabbed me for some reason. It's kind of weirdly both in my aesthetic and very much not in my aesthetic because if I was to sort of quantify or classify Sam's art style, it would be like weird, creepy, cute, kind of all combined. So if that is your thing, you probably wanna take a look at this and anything else that Sam West has done. So she has a bunch of mass market decks out that you can check out. The Rainbow Moon Tarot, which I have and is so fun. The Macabre Tarot, which I don't have. The first edition of that that came out came in a coffin-shaped box. I don't know if it's still in a coffin-shaped box. Um, the, uh, there was another one too that I always keep forgetting. Oh, and then of course, my absolute favorite from her, the Valuri, well, it's going to be called the Valuria's Tarot and right now it's called the, Penelope's Tarot, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorites from the last year. It actually, I mentioned it in my top 10 of 2022 video. I, I love her work, really love her work. So when she launched this, I'm like, well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Sam West, why not? Um, but I'm kind of going in sight unseen and that is even a little bit uncomfortable for me as somebody who's already a fan of her work. I think that it would be better if she had more pictures on the campaign page because she shows the backs here. It does have this like clown vibe and then you get this like flip through kind of thing of a bunch of the cards, but there's not a lot of minor arcana showing in this little flip through. I don't think, yeah, this is just the majors. So there's no, nothing showing the minors except for this image, which has the, the uh, suits that show. So in this deck, teeth are swords, dice are pentacles, flowers are wands and vessels are cups. Um, so it's fun. I like the colors. It looks like it's going to be, I don't know if it's gonna be full size or it's gonna be smaller than full size. I'm trying to see if it, she says that here. Uh, I think she does say it somewhere. There's also a pin. Uh, where is the size? Dimensions? Uh, size? Bridge size. There we go. It is a fun bridge sized tarot, which bridge is a super fun size. So this will be like a little mini kind of situation. I'm excited about this. I think this is going to be really cute. Now the one of hers that I'm really, really, really waiting for, I think it's called the Foragers Tarot. 
I think. That one I'm very excited for. I wonder if that one will be going mass market though. It may be. This one is definitely, she's putting it out as an indie, indie deck. Okay, so apologies. I've been calling Sam Sam West. Um, I think that was one of the, I think that was the name on previous decks. Um, and Sam is Sam Rook. My bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so it's Sam Rook. Uh, I've gotten that wrong. So there's may have been a name change or I'm just mixed up and can't remember right. <laughs> but Sam Rook. Same artist though, because I've been following them on their website and social media. So in any case, that is that deck. I have backed it. Um, it was really affordable. Like it was 35 US for a deck. So it's a little bridge size guy. So it's not over crazy expensive. I think it's cute. I'm taking a chance on it, but I wish there were more pictures of the cards. Even on Sam's Instagram, which I have been following for some time now, these same images are the ones that are shared. So I haven't seen any minor arcana cards to know what they look like. So that part's a risk. Um, and Sam's very clear here, it will be a pip deck. So if you are nervous about that or that's not your thing, just be aware. It's not funded yet. I hope it gets funded because I think it's gonna be really cute. It's not got far to go. Uh, we're 2872 of 3,500 US and you have until Thursday, February 2nd at 5 a.m. roughly Pacific time to back this one if you're interested. Oh, the Shadow Seeker Oracle, Animals and Nature. Uh, this is by the same creator as who did the Shadow Seeker Tarot. This is gorgeous. Same situation as the previous animal deck we talked about though. It's gorgeous, gorgeous artwork of animals and then it just names them. There's no keywords uh, on the cards that I can see here. So that's my immediate hot take is like, this is super beautiful, but I'm probably not gonna use it. Um, and again, that's a me thing, not a deck thing. That squirrel is everything. I was really attracted to the Shadow Seeker Tarot too. I love all these sort of neon-y pinks, purples, and blues, and then the dark backgrounds. I think it's just gorgeous. That snowy owl is breathtaking. These are beautifully, beautifully illustrated cards. Oh, seeing them all out like this, it's, it's a little tempting. It's a little tempting, but I know I won't use it because there's just a thing for me with animal decks and no keywords. Um, I just can't, I can't, I can't. There's a unicorn in here, that's just rude. <laughs> Danielle, I don't, I don't appreciate that. No, if you're gonna put a unicorn in there, put some keywords on there. <laughs> this is my opinion, this is my opinion. Just don't, 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 uh, don't take my word as gospel. That's just my thing. But the Shadow Seeker, and the, or excuse me, the Joy Seeker Tarot, is that what it was called? Wait, so there's Shadow Seeker Tarot, then there's Joy Seeker Tarot, Plant Joy Tarot, these are so pretty. Like, gosh dang, so pretty. Anybody who has all of these, get your collection filled because this is gorgeous. It's just one that I know I wouldn't reach for, but it's it's so pretty and so pretty. I just want to stare at it for a while. It's met its goal. You have until Friday, February 3rd at 6 a.m. to back it. This one got a lot of a lot of attention, but holy cow, the goal is 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 a very high. Um, $62,500 US for this uh, project to complete, to fund. It's not even halfway there yet. And this has been on Kickstarter, I feel like for a while now. It's the Bard's Arcana, the Tarot of Shakespeare. Um, I feel like this is right up so many people's alleys. I don't know Shakespeare well enough to probably benefit from this deck personally, but it looks very well, de well done, well illustrated. And it looks like not only do you get these beautiful illustrations with I think really gorgeous borders and like things that pop out of the borders a little bit, which I always, always love. Um, but then you have the title of the cards and underneath that, it looks like you do get um, the, the Shakespeare reference, like which play or whatnot that it's from. So let's see if we get any bigger cards so you can see. It, but there is some text underneath the name of the card, which I suspect, yeah, so it will show you. So here's the High Priestess, see if I can make it big. I want one that I can actually read, let's see. I can't read that, I can't read that. <laughs> But they, these are really beautiful. I feel like if you're a Shakespeare fan, like if you're really into Shakespeare, like, and you also read tarot, why would you not give this a go? And it looks to me like there are a couple of different options. Um, they want to be able to make it with gold foil stamping on every card. Um, but they're saying it'll cost them $110,000 to get there. This is such a high goal. This I don't even know if they'll be able to fund it at 62,500. I feel like that's such a high goal. It's so hard to meet that. And this is a niche product, right? With a niche um, community who would be able to, gosh, I keep messing up my Zoom. I feel like this is only gonna to appeal to people who I think will get the references. That's not fair, actually. This looks like it's very much like going to be enough of a Rider Waite Smith clone that even if you don't get all the Shakespeare references, you'll be able to read with this. So if you're attracted to the artwork or if you wanna learn more about Shakespeare, I think this could be a good fit for you. But even still, there is a bit of a niche there, right? And so I, I wish their goal was a little more attainable. Um, I think that could be done. 
for less, but I guess it depends on how many how many backers they have and how many decks they want to order at a time. But it's really it's really beautiful. I, I hope it succeeds. I'd love to watch a walkthrough of this deck. It's not one that I'm personally tempted by, but it's really lovely, really lovely. The Neoteric Feminine Tarot by Y Spell. Tarot deck inspired by classic illustrations through the gaze of femininity, equipped with tarot guide and tarot card meanings. So this one is also not all the way at its goal. Um, this one you have until Friday, uh, February 3rd at 6 a.m. Pacific time, give or take. I'm not in the market right now for more decks that are all purely feminine. I think it's cool that they exist, but I have so many decks that I feel like take me into that very feminine space, and I don't feel like I need more of that right now. So for me, that's not really a thing. I love that we get to meet the entire team that worked on this. That's kind of cool. Is there more pictures? Hello? Okay, there we go. Uh, oh, maybe not. That's, no, we have a, a keepsake box. That's cool. Um, the guidebook looks, I can't tell if this is just the mock-up that's making it look so chunky, but it looks like a decently chunky guidebook. I want to, I want to read the pages. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I like these like edges. They're almost like a peachy kind of pale warm gold, kind of, kind of. Oh, there's like a keyword edition and then a full resolution edition. Oh, that's kind of cool. Ah, uh, that's what's going on. So there's two different editions you can choose from. There's a keyword edition where you get the upright and reverse keywords and then the artworks in the center. Or there's the full resolution edition, which I think is much, much prettier in the sense that it's borderless. The artwork takes up the whole card. Um, corner to corner illustration. That's cool. That's that one's actually a lot more appealing. The bordered one, not so much. It's just a little bit too hemmed in. But I could see for somebody newer to tarot, wanting one that has keywords on it, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, I like that they're doing that. That gives people options. That's pretty awesome. So when you're backing it, do you get to pick? Yeah, full resolution edition, which is, oh, this is probably why they're having trouble. This is such a low price. This is almost low enough that I'm concerned. When I say that I'm concerned, I'm not concerned like that something's gonna go wrong. It doesn't make me concerned like that, but it does concern me that there's not enough profit in that for the creators. But um, they're only charging 27 US for the full resolution edition, which includes the box and a physical guidebook. Um, oh, it's only, you can only back it in the US? Oh, it's limited to the US only. That's a bummer. Um, that is a bummer. But yeah, you can back the full resolution edition or you can back the keyword. I'm confused. Is there a keyword only edition that you can back? Yes, or you can back the keyword edition. That price is very low. And I also wonder if that's why they're having trouble meeting their goal because it's so low. They, they need more backers to get there. I don't know. That's a very low price. Um, I didn't look into the production value. Um, does it say what kind of card stock? It's gilded. I don't know how they're doing that for $27. I don't know. It looks like these are Ukrainian cre uh, creators. That's cool. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't say, it doesn't say the resolution, or I'm just not seeing it. That's entirely possible. Standard tarot size, gold edges, I'm not seeing the actual card stock quality, but them holding that sample deck that looked like regular standard card stock, I, I don't know, that's a very low price. Like that's low enough to almost wanna just take a chance on it <laughs> because it's really cute. Um, so I guess I'm mildly tempted by this one now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit the remind me. We'll figure it out later. It's fine, it's fine. Let's talk about the Marseille Tarot Dice. This is so fun. I'm totally not gonna buy this, probably. It, oh, it comes in a 10. Probably not gonna buy this. Probably. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's got a $13,000 Canadian goal. What's its actual goal? 10,000 US. Um, and they're about a third of the way there or so, roughly, a little bit over the, a third. With 19 days to go, um, you have until Friday, February 3rd at 6.20 to back this one. I'm digging the tin with the spots for all the dice. Like just the fact that it's in a tin is literally making me want that. How is that? That that doesn't even make sense. It's nonsensical. I have a thing for tins, I guess. I don't know. Um, I love that it's tarot dice. I like that it's based on the Marseille. I think that's pretty cool. I like that each side of the dice is labeled. It's not just engraved. Um, these seem surprisingly clear to look at. What I'm confused about, maybe they address this in the video, is that how did they split these up so that you have like... How do they split these up? And do you roll all of them? You must have to roll all of them, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, you must have to roll all of them. And then how many do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 dice? 
that's a big tarot spread. And like, I don't know, I'm on the fence. Or do you like do it like casting and like you put them in a dish or in a bag or something and then you like roll them around and then you like pick out a few and then roll those. And like based on which ones you drew. I guess you could do it that way. You don't have to roll all of them. But then how do they determine what the odds are? Like, I mean, like, how do they break up, break it up? Is there a major arcana on every dice? It looks like there is. And then suits on every dice? I guess that makes sense. <laughs> I'm in my head about this. Can you tell? You could have, uh, no, how do you, how did they evenly split this? I just, I have so many questions. I have so many questions. But I guess 78, 13, let's just see. Does 78 divide by 13? Yes, six. So 13 dice, six sides, that's how they did it. Okay, so it's divisible, so it works. My brain is like about to explode. Can you tell? I'm like trying to figure this out. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I'm sure they're not the first ones on the scene with tarot dice of any kind, but I do think these are really cool in the way that they have the Marseille pips and that everything's labeled. I do think the yellow die is a little, which is gonna be the swords, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, they have the, uh, the same elemental associations and colored associations I would expect. So blue for cups for water. Green for pentacles for earth, yellow for swords for air, and red for wands for fire. Um, I forget what I was saying. I, I totally distracted myself with colors. But this looks cool. I just, I, would I use this? Also, how much is this? Oh, they still got early bird up. What? Oh, at the time I'm filming. I'm sorry. I apologize if you're seeing this and the early bird's gone. That's my fault. <laughs> but they currently have early bird. How much is it at early bird? Just out of curiosity. It would cost me $91 to have these dice. Okay, that's no. that's a no. This is such a novelty thing. I'm probably not gonna use it. And I have my charm cast tarot. So I can cast tarot already. Uh, I don't I don't, I don't need this. But I'm kind of curious about it. Okay, next up is the Elemental Empath Oracle deck. A magical 52 card self-love deck for empathic women with channeled art and practical guidance for shadow work and divine connection. Uh, men are empaths too. I felt like I needed to say that. There are many men that are empaths too and people that are not women identified? Anyways, okay, moving on. Uh, so we have uh, met our funding goal. This artwork looks really pretty. So mini rant aside. Uh, so this has met its goal and then some, uh, and you have until Thursday, February 9th at 4 p.m. Pacific time to back this. So it's got a guidebook. It looks like a flip up box or like a book style box, clamshell style box of some kind. Those backs are really pretty. This artwork is gorgeous. Um, it looks like you get a primary keyword. Well, the magic is within you. Yes, it is. You get a primary keyword and then it looks like, yeah, it looks like there's some, um, like a phrase or some other keywords underneath that, which is really great. So here you have death and rebirth and then you've got other, in, other information or um, nudges down below. That's pretty awesome. I love the colors here and I love the art style. It's really pretty. It does look a little bit almost um, magazine, body-ish, if that makes sense. Um, so there's that. I don't know if this is something that I, I don't really feel like I need this necessarily, but it's, I like the way it's put together. I do like that we have that um, primary keyword and then additional keywords. That's often a thing that I look for in Oracle decks. So I love that. How much is this out of curiosity? It's 52 cards. So for me to back in Canada, $10 shipping, so it'd be $80 Canadian. So it's, it's reasonably priced, especially for the quality it looks like you're getting. So that's lovely. I can see, oh, and there's a sample of the of a guidebook entry. I like that they did that. That's really neat. Oh, here's a picture of Miyuki, the, the creator. Several pictures of them doing art. Oh, I love that. Okay, so here's what the cards look like. Okay, I, I might have to take it back. Look at this, like, fat rolls on this mermaid. I think that's awesome. Okay, so it's not so magazine body-ish. Definitely not. Yeah, there's definitely more variety of bodies in here than I originally assumed. So I take that back. I'm very sorry. Um, there is more variety there. Not a ton, a ton. It's still like, which is not a big deal. That's going to be more common. So that makes sense. It's really, it's got a very like um, mm, sacred sisterhood kind of vibe to it, which makes sense for the theme. So it looks like they're expecting to ship by May 5th or so. And it looks like you get some colorable car cards as well. Like, oh, maybe like, it looks like a digital PDF. That's cool, it's pretty. I don't think this is one that I'm like chomping at the bit to purchase. Again, I feel like I have so many things that speak to the feminine and I don't need a lot more of that right now. At least I'm not feeling that. I wanna reach for the things I do have and really treasure in that area. So this one's not as tempting, but it is really, really pretty. Oh, creatures, a tarot deck. Okay, I feel like I remember seeing something about this. This is fully funded. I, yeah, I did. I have seen it because I, I saved it. Uh, you have until Thursday, February 9th at 4 p.m. Pacific to purchase this. <sighs> what do I think about this? This is like, if I recall, yeah, it's like sort of silhouette creatures, all different kinds of creatures. There's something about this that I really, really like. 
Oh, interesting. These are all more difficult cards and they're all very dark. Are they all dark or just the more difficult ones? Oh, I really like this. I really like this. I love this art style. I like the silhouette, silhouettedness of it. The other decks. Oh, there's a sister deck to this tarot deck called the Creature's Oracle. Uh, oh, so you could possibly get that. I feel like I remember that one. That one feels so much more kind of silly. What's the other one though? Oh, the other one is called Everybody's Tarot. That one's the one that's more cartoonish. So this one, okay, so the Creature's Oracle. Oh, dang it. Can you get both the Tarot and the Oracle? You guys, what am I doing? Okay, so let's see. Is there is there a pledge level for Tarot and Oracle? That's what I want to know. Let's just go back to normal size page here. Um, hello? Can you add it on? What's happening? Let's just see. If uh, I was to get it, it'd be 82. Can I add it on? Can I add on the Oracle? Oh, you can't add on? Why are you telling me about it if I can't add it on? Hold on. So wait, I tried to see if you could add on the creature's Oracle to your tarot and I don't think you can. So why are you showing it to me if I can't add it on? That's what I wanna know. Creatures, Oracle, okay. Why would you, okay. I'm gonna have a little mini rant. Why not have the Oracles available to add on to your pledge? Why? That's what I wanna know. Why not? What if I want the Oracle and the Tarot together? Then what? It's not listed as an add-on. Um, if I back this, I may actually message the creator and see if that's an option. If you've backed this, or if you've already found out whether we can add the Oracle, I'd love to know. I'd be curious, because maybe getting both at the same time would be more would make more sense. I am not 100% on getting this. I should back myself up. I'm not 100%, but I'm very, very tempted. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it and we will see. And lastly, we have the Serpent and the Peacock tarot deck, the art version. So this is not a new tarot deck. Well, it isn't, it's a new version of an older tarot deck. So I actually had a copy and reviewed a copy of the Serpent and the Peacock tarot, the original one, which I will link a copy or link the, you know, I'll link the review or whatever somewhere up in the cards uh, for you so you can check that out. I really enjoyed reviewing it. I thought it was really cool, but this is definitely not my aesthetic. This is something I think that Danny and Dustin should look at. Um, and this version of the deck seems a lot more like zoomed in, a lot more focused on the art. The original one, it's not that the original one was not focused on the art, but it was traditionally bordered, had that kind of classic Rider Waite Smith border look to it um, with the labels and such. Whereas this version, so that's what I think they're showing us here. This version looks like it's cropped into the artwork and it's more like, the artwork's taking up more real estate on the card and there's more variance to the type of borders that you have, it looks like. It almost, um, the layout of it reminds me a little bit of the Divine Muses uh, Oracle or other things by Marie Bento. It's got that kind of like, it's not cookie cutter in the way everything is laid out, which is really interesting. I think it's cool that they played with that. But yeah, this is not one that's gonna tempt me because I had the original and I ended up rehoming it. So, so it wasn't for me long term, but it was fun to look at. In any case, that is the Serpent and Peacock tarot. For those of you who are interested, check it out. You have until February 21st at 1.40 p.m. to back this one. And that is it for my hot takes. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I would love to hear your thoughts on the tarot and oracle decks that I covered today. Leave your thoughts and your comments in the comments section down below this video or beside this video, depending on what device you're looking at it on. And don't forget to click that like button before you leave and subscribe if you wanna see more content from me all about tarot and oracle decks. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Until then, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.